I got some exciting news. We're kicking off our very first YouTube giveaway. We're giving away two of our Bell Bora store boxes in the small version. If you're interested in winning one of these bad boys, definitely watch through this entire video. You're gonna find out both the giveaway question and the answer. To enter into the giveaway, all you need to do is like this video, subscribe to our channel, and leave a comment down below of the answer. Good luck everyone. And if you've already bought one of our boxes, you know, thank you so much for the support. It really means a lot. We couldn't have gone this far without everyone. And if you happen to win another box in this giveaway, you know, it's a great opportunity to give to a friend, you know, bring more people into the mycology space and get people to grow mushrooms with you. It's definitely a very fun hobby. Good luck. Hey everyone, it's Duke here again with Bellabora. And I know it's been a while since I posted my last video showing you how to set up the Bellabora stirrer box. But as promised, here I am again and this will be a first video in a series of videos showing you how to grow mushrooms at home from the start to the finish. And specifically in this video, I will show you how to sterilize your grains, which is the first step that you would need to do to grow your own mushrooms. But before I get into it, Growing mushrooms is a really cool way to get the family and friends together to learn about the mushroom life cycle where they start from these spores and then they convert into these mycelia and then eventually develop into these very beautiful fruiting bodies that we call the mushrooms themselves. And if you keep doing this, you have an endless supply of mushrooms that are fresh and farm to table instead of having to go to the grocery store and getting these mushrooms that might be sitting there for at least a couple days on the shelf. And using these methods, you can actually grow very exotic mushrooms that you can't even find at the grocery stores, such as lion's mane, uh, cordyceps mushrooms, and reishi mushrooms, which have been shown to have profound health benefits, such as promoting your gut health, your brain health, and also your immune system. But I'm sure if you're already here watching this video, you already know all of the advantages of these mushrooms. So let's get right into it. In this video, again, I will show you how to sterilize your grains for growing your own mushrooms at home. And these grains is the food source for the mushroom mycelia to grow on. So let's go. Step one, gather equipment. To sterilize your grain, you would need some mason jars to hold your grain. Here I have mason jars with a modified lid where I've inserted polyfill or pillow stuffing to serve as a filter to prevent outside contaminants from entering your grains. This will also be where we will insert the needle of our spore or liquid culture syringe and inject the spores or mycelium into the grain once it is sterilized. For sterilization, I like to place an unmodified lid face down and over the modified lid. This acts to prevent water from entering your fully hydrated grains during the sterilization process. Since you do not want any standing water in your grains because it will prevent the mycelium from growing and can also promote bacteria to grow instead which will make your grains smell sour after a few days. So after sterilization, you can store the jars with both lids and when you're ready to inoculate your grains, just remove the top lid. Note that I did not clean these mason jars from the previous grow to show you that it's really not necessary since you performed the sterilization properly any potential contaminants inside the jars will be killed as well. Next, you will need some grains high in carbohydrates, which will be used as an energy and nutrient food source to feed your hungry mushroom mycelia. Here, I am using wheat berries and millet that I got from the local feed store. If there is one near you, this is a very cheap way to obtain grains for growing your mushrooms. I got a 50 pound bag of wheat berries and millet for around $20 to $25 each, insanely affordable. And I really like using these wheat berries with the husk on because it serves as a layer between the grains. So when you cook and rehydrate the grains, they do not stick together. Even if you overcook the grains and they get really mushy, the whole kind of encapsulates the grain inside like a pouch. And it works wonders. Next, I have some millet to add food diversity to the mycelia. Different grains will have different compositions of nutrients and minerals, which I find lends to a more healthy growing mycelia. You can think of this as a giving your mushroom mycelia a very balanced diet. Finally, you need a pressure cooker. I'm using a large 23 quart pressure cooker that was made for canning foods, which is a perfect application for sterilizing our grains in mason jars at home. The pressure cooker is a very necessary 
equipment here because it allows you to reach the high temperatures required to sterilize the grains effectively. I like using a simple pressure cooker without the bells and whistles because that means there are less moving parts and electronics that can fail you. Some optional supplements that you can add to your grain during the rehydration step is gypsum, also known as calcium sulfate dihydrate. Gypsum serves as a source of calcium, an essential nutrient for mushroom growth. Calcium is necessary for the development of the mushroom's cell walls and also helps to strengthen the structure of the mushroom. Alright everyone, so we're going to take a very quick break from the main video to reveal the Stair Air Box giveaway question. And so drum roll please, the question is why should you use a Stair Air Box? To enter, drop your answer in the comment section and hit that subscribe button and like this video. Two lucky winners will be randomly selected. Now back to the main video. Step 2. Prepare the grain. Measure out the amount of grain you wish to sterilize and place it in a large pot. Here I'm using a 1 to 1 ratio of wheat berries to millet. Expect the grains to expand in 3 times the volume so you can calculate how much grain to measure out accordingly. For instance, if you wanted to make 9 quart sized jars of hydrated and sterilized grain, you would measure out 3 quart sized jars of dehydrated grain. Next, add water to the pot making sure that the water level is well above the grains as they will expand as they rehydrate and are boiled. Here you can add some gypsum. I add 1 teaspoon of gypsum to 1 quart sized jar of grain. Leave the grains to soak overnight and you should see that they expand. The next day, put your pot on the stove and turn on the heat. Once the water reaches a rolling boil, turn down the heat and let it simmer for around 10 minutes. Stir occasionally. As I wait, I'm going to make myself a cup of coffee and enjoy my morning. After 10 minutes, check to see if your grains are softening up. You can do so by fishing out some grains and try to break the grains. After 10 minutes, this is what my grains look like. I did not drain the grains whatsoever. The water level went down so much after 10 to 15 minutes because the grains absorb even more water during this process. This is great because it will provide a large water source to the mycelia when they are devouring these grains. Remember that coffee I made? The mushrooms will get to enjoy it too. I like to add some fresh spent coffee grounds to my grains. Coffee grounds are rich in nitrogen, phosphorus, and other trace materials which is an essential ingredient for growing mushrooms. Coffee grounds also contain a high level of lignin, which is a complex carbohydrate found in woody plants and an important food source for the mycelium. Be careful not to go overboard with the coffee though, because too much nutrients can also promote the growth of contaminants. And you should only introduce coffee grounds at steps where you will be sterilizing the growing medium, such as this green step. Next, you will drain the grains and let them evaporate any excess water. This step is very important to do thoroughly because excess water will pool at the bottom of your jars, preventing the mushroom mycelia to grow and increase your chances of bacterial contamination instead. I leave the grains out under the sun for an hour or two, turning the grains once in a while. Once the grains have been dried, we can start filling our quart sized mason jars with the rehydrated grains. Here it's important to not fill the jars completely to the top, fill to about two thirds of the way up. Then you can place the modified lids with the polyfill on the jars, followed by the unmodified lid facing downwards, and then the screw cap. Make sure not to tighten the lids. This will allow the pressure to equilibrate inside the mason jars and properly sterilize the grains. Place the mason jars inside the pressure cooker and fill the bottom of the pressure cooker with water. Make sure there is sufficient water so that the pressure cooker does not dry out during the sterilization process. About 3 or 4 inches of water is a good amount. Now you're ready to sterilize. Place the pressure cooker on the stove, latch on the lid, and fire them up. Make sure the pressure regulator, which is this weighted cap, is on the lid. The pressure cooker should start to build steam and pressure inside as the temperature increases. Once the pressure gauge reaches 15 psi, you can lower the heat to medium low and let it sterilize for 90 minutes. Once the time is up, you can kill the heat and let the pressure cooker rest overnight until it is fully cooled off. Please do not try to remove the lid or the pressure regulator when the pressure gauge tells you there is still pressure inside. Here we are at the next day. 
I'm expecting them to sterilize green jars and we see there's no standing water. This is perfect. Now you can tighten the lids of the mason jars and store them for when you're ready to inoculate with your mushroom mycelia. And that's it for this video. I hope you learned a lot about how to sterilize green for growing your mushrooms at home. And I hope I explained each step pretty well so that you can really understand why each step is important in the mushroom growing process. If you have any more questions, please leave them below and I'll try to get to them. And if you have any comments, you know, drop them down there as well. And also like, subscribe and all that jazz if you want. Uh, look out for the next video though. Um, I'll show you how to inoculate these grains once they're sterilized um, in our bell border stir box using either liquid culture or spore syringes. Um, so, see you next time. Cheers! Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. Remember, we're giving away two of our bell border stir boxes. To be eligible, just leave your answer in the comment section down below. Like this video and subscribe. And thanks again for watching. See ya!